Everyone, I hope everything's going well since the last time we saw you. We're at MIMA. We educate, minimize, and manage concussion safety. My name is Rafael. And my name is Zoya. Now we'll just get right into it. Now the first thing that we've done since we had the hackathon was ESHA words. Now just to explain what this is. ESHA words help students financially and with support to create new innovative solutions, devices, and technology that help the Canadian society and, and just to make the world a little easier to live in, right? The first stage is the interaction award. It's $5,000 and this was the first stage that we initially applied. Now, we had to do a lot of research into this stage and we performed research on different topics which we'll be covering through the presentation. Now, the following stages are the development award um, stage and the marketing readiness stage. We'll be looking into those later if we win the first stage, fingers crossed. Now, head check, health, uh, heart concussion recognition, and the concussion ed app, even the Q caller, all of these companies are existing companies that either focus on something that's tangible or something that's technical, whether that's an application or a device that you put on, try on, something like that. Now at, at MIMA, we want to focus on the two, right? We want to combine these two, and combining these two will help in reducing concussions. Also, a crucial part is that we feel like there's a lack of focus on the social aspect of it and the cultural aspect of it, of concussions and how we can improve and encourage youth to talk about their symptoms. As an example, back in 2014, ALSI's Bucket Challenge raised $150 million within a span of eight weeks. We're trying to do something very similar here with the hashtag concussion spinning challenge. Individuals will spin around to replicate the symptoms of concussion. They'll get some symptoms and these symptoms will include something as disorientation or dizziness. And these symptoms will go away in a short time, but that does not mean that everything's fine. This is the message that we're trying to get across. Um, and we will be elaborating a little bit more about this challenge later on. Now to the market potential. And to the fun part, uh, Canada's youth sports economy is currently dominated by travel teams and national tournaments, uh, sports equipment and coaching, medicine and new smartphone applications, which has amassed a whopping $8.7 billion industry. And the next steps that Admima plans to take in the following months is to perform interviews with 50 players, 40 professional athletes, and 15 healthcare clinic professionals, as well as conduct surveys that will address two particular groups, the players and the professionals. From the players' side, we will address topics such as education and, commu and communication, while from the professional side, we will talk about addressing management and informing the players about Roman's law. And to talk about the Canadian economy, over the course of the project, we will be researching into methods of prevention as well as identifying concussions prior to permanent brain damage. And in Canada, direct and indirect costs have amassed to an outstanding $26.8 billion. And to discuss the data collection side will be Raphael. Hello. So we'll just be talking a little bit about the data collection. This was stage two. This is one of the secondary things that we've done since um, the competition itself. We created a survey to collect a series of responses and gather statistics and data. And data. We've managed to uh, get 86 individuals to participate in the survey. We got different information corresponding to the questions that we wanted to be answered. We'll be talking about these in the presentation. For example, one of them, how long have you been dealing with symptoms? Now, more than 54% of people said that they were dealing with symptoms for more than a year, which is a long time. Another the questions, what post-concussion support do you think you could have benefited from but did not receive? For example, general support from doctors, more information about what vitamins to take and what post-concussion is and how to manage. Furthermore, and to discuss the social aspect of it, one of the important questions to ask was how many people did hear about the ALS challenge and where did they hear it about? It? And this data over here shows that the significant majority heard it from Instagram and Facebook 
And another question that we found was really astounding was the views on the objective of the challenge. One of the testimonials over here in particular mentioned the awareness and the increased funding for research for it. And to talk about Rowan's law today uh, will be Raphael. Now, we really wanted to focus on this. The question that we asked is, have you heard of Rowan's law? Are you aware of it? 22.1% said yes, which is not a lot. We want to increase the number in order to apply our social movement in order to continue working with uh, Rowan's law. Now, we believe that building a partnership or mentorship with the Rowan's Legacy Foundation will help us with the concussion spinning challenge and to move forward. Now, Jules will be explaining the application itself and some other concepts. Hey guys, my name is Jules and I will be going over the mobile application for Edminma. So since the competition, the mobile application more or less stayed within its core functionality. We have three sections in order to educate, manage and minimize concussions in youth athletes across Canada. The first section will be the coaching section, which will help coach perform cognitive and logical assessments for athletes before and after games and this data will be moved to a database. Now the second section will be for students and this particular student would be able to access their data from their assessments and portray to a nice visual like this but also depending on the assessment they could move on to the appropriate steps to take. The third section will be the resources page which will have functionalities such as speak to peer um, equipment trends, we also have educational videos. And so we at NEMA, we know that there are a lot of resources to help concussions, to help manage concussions, and we wanna be that platform so that when athletes go on our app, they could just easily access all of those platforms that are scattered anywhere. Now for the app visibility. When we were, when we were considering the application itself, the mobile application, we were going about, the, we were exploring different pathways. The first pathway, was the app developing software. So app developing software such as Glide would kind of constrict us in a way and to be able to use its full features, we have to pay for them. Another pathway was actually sourcing the application development to um, a developer, a mobile developer, but we found that this would cause a lot of money. The, we ended up with having to make the app ourselves. And so, you know, when someone says, oh, I'll just make an app, it's actually more complicated, but it's, it is still feasible and the most cheap one. So we're going to go follow a software development process. This is, you know, we will be using a waterfall mo uh, model. I will be explaining that later, but we will use a cross-platform framework such as Xamarin or React Native, which when implemented with the code, we are able to have a finished product that is available to the top two most dominant devices, which is iOS and Android devices. So now going back to the waterfall, the first phase is planning and requirements. It's also called requirements analysis and elicitation. This is kind of like how the app is gonna interact with users from the end user's perspective. And so the next step is the design, which is another top level abstraction I would say. It's kind of how the, app, the systems inside the application would interact with each other and do the appropriate actions. The third step is implementation which is the actual coding of the application which will take a lot of time because there could be you know unnecessary uh, delays or errors and the last one is testing and deployment which is pretty self-explanatory. Now for the next step we are currently in the requirement analysis and elicitation so what we're going to be doing is that we're going to have extensive research and multiple feedbacks from target sources such as youth athletes to iterate on our final app requirements, what the app requires from the end users. And to help that, we have Dr. Olivia Das, who has a PhD in software systems engineering to kind of put us on the right track and to make sure that when finished with this phase, that there's no other problems along the road. And so. I want to say thank you guys for listening and I hope you were delighted with what Edmima has planned, been planning for weeks and hope you stay tuned.